All right, question one tells us that one inch on a map equals five miles, and that can be written as a ratio, right? One inch for every five miles. Uh, apparently two cities are eight inches apart on a map, and they wanna know what the actual distance is. So if one inch is five miles in real life, then they say eight inches are essentially how many miles, right? So we can set up an, a simple proportion. We can ask ourselves, well, how do I get from one to eight? And you would therefore multiply by eight. And whatever you do to the top, you've got to do the same thing to the bottom, right? Times eight, times eight. So five times eight, 40 miles. There you go. Question two. Uh, hopefully you've read this by now. Um, it says that the number of squares represents the X values, right? So x is essentially 2 because there are two squares. Uh, the number of ovals is represented by the y value. If you count up the ovals, you'll eventually get 10. So y is 10. And as we know, in any proportional relationship, uh, the constant of proportionality is going to be y divided by x, right? So if we take 10 and divide by 2, you'll have your answer, all right? y is 10, x is 2. 10 divided by 2, which equals 5, or 5 over 1. This would be the best answer and the only answer for that problem. Question 3. <clears throat> You're able to go 8 miles per hour at a steady rate, and they want to know what equation represents the proportional relationship between the x hours that you bike and the distance y in miles that you travel. Well, in any proportional relationship, it is represented by this equation, y equals mx, and m is the constant of proportionality. It is the unit rate, right? And they give us a unit rate in the very first sentence. You bike eight miles per hour. So that unit rate is eight miles per one hour. So that right there needs to be an eight. Y equals eight X. All right, it's, it's literally as simple as that. You just kind of need to memorize that. All right, Y equals eight X. Eight is the constant proportionality. Let's see unit rate. Um, and really, if you think about it, X is the hours that you bike. So say you bike one hour, that'd be one times eight. And that would tell you the distance in miles that you've actually traveled, right? One times eight would be the distance you traveled, which would be eight miles. All right, question four, find the constant of proportionality. Constant of proportionality, as we know, is y divided by x. So you simply take y, 90, and you divide it by 5, which is x. So 90 divided by 5 will give you your answer here, which will be uh, 18, if my math is correct, right? 18 over 1, or 18 right there. And that will work for all of these. 108 divided by 6 will also give you 18. And that'll work for the rest of this table as well. And that's why it's proportional. Same exact type of problem, right? The ratio of y divided by x is the constant of proportionality. And they want to know what goes here, essentially. So take your y value, which is 12, and divide that by your x value, which is 3. 12 divided by 3 can be reduced down to 4 over 1. And that is right here. Second option. And that's true for the entire table. 16 divided by 4, that's 4. 20 divided by 5, that's 4. 24 divided by 6, that's 4. <clears throat> oh my, same situation right here. All right? Decide whether this entire table shows a proportional relationship. Y divided by X is the constant of proportionality. That's what M is. So we take 25, which is our Y value. And when y is 25, x has to be 5 in this situation. So 25, our y value divided by 5, will give us 5. Great. But we want to see, does that work for the entire table? So we would take 30, our y value divided by 6. 30 divided by 6. Is that 5? Yes, it is. Is 35 divided by 7 5? Yes, it is. Right. And then lastly, 40 divided by 8 is 5. Therefore, if these numbers are the same for the entire table, that means this is a proportional relationship. That's the constant of proportionality in your equation. That would be right there. Your unit rate, your constant of proportionality, m, 
All right, question seven. Does this graph show a proportional relationship or which of the graphs shows one? Well, as you know, any proportional relationship has to be one, has to be two things, right? It's gotta be a straight line and it also has to run straight through the origin, which is right here. And the only one that does that is this right here, right? That's not a straight line and this one does not go through the origin. Therefore, that's wrong and this is wrong. That's the correct answer, A. Question eight, <clears throat> what's the constant of proportionality, which is something you have to memorize. Y equals mx, m is the constant of proportionality. It is the unit rate, as you'll find out soon, and certainly in eighth grade, it's also the slope of the line. It's what makes the line steeper or less steep when you look at it, right? So M is the constant of proportionality. What is it? It's right here. It's nine, just something you have to memorize. It's the number that gets multiplied by X to give you Y. So nine, enter only a number, just enter nine. There it is. Uh, this question, what does the point 35 comma 315 represent? You always go right or left first. That's the X value and then you go up or down for the y value anytime you are graphing x comma y. So from the origin, we're going to go right 35, which would be to about here. And then we're going to go up 315, which is about right, right here. And they're wondering, what does that point actually represent? Well, that means in 35, what? 35 minutes, right? In 35 minutes, how far or how many calories can we burn? about 315 calories burned, right? So we wanna know which of these actually makes sense. 35 minutes, there's 35 minutes and 315 calories burned in 35 minutes. That's the only one that actually makes sense. So that's, that's your answer. Question 10, simple proportion. I'm gonna give you two ways to solve this. The first way is super crazy easy. These are equivalent fractions. You have both denominators. You can ask, how can I get from four to eight and you can multiply by two, right? You're always either gonna multiply or divide. You're never adding. You're never adding, you're never subtracting. It's always multiplying or dividing. So if you multiply by two on the bottom, you have to do the same thing to the top. So therefore three times two would give you your answer of, of six. That's one way to solve this, but we also need you to know how to solve this using algebra. So I'm gonna rewrite the same exact problem and I'm gonna do this using algebra so that we all understand. You ask yourself, if I need to find X, I need to ask myself what is actually happening to X right now. It's being divided by eight. And in order to get X by itself, we wanna do the opposite of what's being done to it right now. So the opposite of dividing by eight is multiplying by eight. And you must do that to both sides of the equation. You can't just make one side eight times bigger. You got to make the other side eight times bigger as well. And when you're multiplying fractions, you can turn eight into a fraction on both sides. And as you know, uh, you can, when you're multiplying fractions, that's no problem. Just the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. So eight times three is 24. And then over one times four is four. Bring your equal sign straight down. Uh, x divided by 8 times 8 is just simply x, all right? That's why we did that. We got rid of the divided by 8 by multiplying by 8. So you just have x, and then x is equal to 24 over 4. x is equal to, therefore, 6, because 24 divided by 4 is 6. And you get the same answer that we got, that we got earlier, right? But that's how you use uh, algebra to solve the problem. All right, question 11, they wanna know if this table shows a proportional relationship between the number of dozens of eggs and the cost. Um, anytime you see a table in, in math, typically the first column is gonna be the X value and the second column will be the Y value. That's typically true more often than not, but you can also remember that Y is the dependent variable and therefore it depends on the value of X. So. In other words, like how much something costs is going to be dependent on how much you're buying, right? All right, if you buy nothing, it's not going to cost anything. That's why the cost depends on the, uh, the X value, essentially. The Y value depends on the X value. All right, moving on. So anyway, is this a proportional relationship? Any proportional relationship 
is going to have a constant of proportionality of y divided by x. All right, so we're going to take our y value and divide it by our x value, 21 divided by 6. For the first row, when you do that, you will get in your calculator 3.5 or 3.5. All right, if you do that for the next row, 28 divided by 8, you will also get 3.5, right? 8 goes into 28 three times. Your denominator is still 8. 8 times 3 is 24. I need 4 more to get to 28. 4 is half of 8, so that's also 3.5. And I could do this for the rest of these, but you essentially need to make sure that this relationship of y divided by x is 3.5 for the entire table. And if you do that, you'll find the answer is yes. 35 divided by 10 is 3.5, and 49 divided by 14 is also 3.5. So that is a big old yes. Question 12. Does this equation y equals 8x show a proportional relationship between x and y? Any proportional relationship essentially means that y is a constant multiple of x, where m is the unit rate. It's the constant of proportionality. And right now they're saying that 8 is m, so y equals 8x. So we want to know, is y a constant multiple of x? Well, yeah, it is. It's 8 times what x is, right? And if you want to double check that, if you want to know if it's a proportional relationship, it's going to have to be a straight line, and it's also going to have to go through the origin. So you can say, well, I can make a table. What if x is 0? If x is 0, you put a 0 in for x, 0 times 8 will give you what y equals. Well, what's 0 times 8? That's 0, right? So if x is 0, then y is also 0. Guess what? That's 0, comma 0. That's your first coordinate. That's running through the origin, isn't it, right? And then, you know, if x is 1, you put a 1 in for x, and you still multiply by 8, and that will give you what y equals. What's 1 times 8? That's 8. So when x is 1, when x is 1, y is 8, right? When x is 2, 2 times 8, y will be 16. When x is 3, 3 times 8 is 24, y would be 24. And so you see that y is a constant multiple of what x is. y is going to be 8 times greater than what x is, and that's what it says right here. So therefore, you know, if you, if you graph this out with each coordinate here, uh, you will eventually realize that yes, in fact, um, if I graph this, it'll, it'll be a straight line and it's going to run through the origin. All right, so that's a proportional relationship for sure. 8 is the constant of proportionality there. Uh, last question. This equation describes a proportional relationship between x and y. What is the constant of proportionality? Well, as you might recall from every single question we've done so far, the constant of proportionality or the unit rate is m, and that's there for this right here, which is 2 thirds. All right, 2 thirds. Enter your answer as an integer or a fraction. So that would be good. And how you'll type it in is just 2 slash 3 on uh, your Chromebook or your, your computer. All right, guys, go get them.